2 Kings 9, 1 through 37. Devotional Focus Verse. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins, and take this box of oil in thine hand, and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshai, and go in, and make him arise up from among his brethren, and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil, and pour it on his head, and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door, and flee, and tarry not. 2 Kings 9, 1-3 In his work for the Lord, David Livingston faced a difficult task. The missionary's intense desire for the people of Africa to hear the gospel had led him into the interior of that continent. Upon arriving in the area selected for a home base, a large hut was erected as the mission station. Unfortunately, the area was overrun by lions. The villagers were terrified because, as they said, the lion, the lord of the night, kills our cattle and sheep even in the daytime. Livingston recognized that this threatening situation had to be dealt with. He knew that if he could kill one of the lions, the others would flee. So taking his gun and telling the people to bring their spears, he led the villagers on a lion hunt. Deep in the jungle, Livingston spotted an enormous lion behind a bush. Taking careful aim, he fired both barrels. The lion was wounded, but while the missionary was reloading, it sprang toward him. Livingston described what happened next, saying, The lion caught me by the shoulder, and we both came to the ground together. Growling horribly, he shook me as a terrier dog does a rat. Some of the villagers with Livingston rushed to his aid, and the lion turned upon two of them. But at that moment, the bullets Livingston had fired took effect, and the lion fell dead. Livingston had 11 tooth marks on his body and the bone of his left arm was splintered, but he succeeded in his purpose. The area was rid of the menace. In our text today, we read of another man who faced a challenging task. Elisha the prophet commissioned a younger prophet to go to Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat. His instructions were to take Jehu away to a secluded place and anoint him king over Israel. Many years before, Elijah had prophesied that numerous people would be killed when Jehu became king. So Elisha urged the young man to flee the area as soon as his task was accomplished. See 1 Kings 19, 16 and 17. What thoughts must have gone through that young prophet's mind as he faced this dangerous assignment? While we likely never will need to face wild lions or anoint a king, there may be times in our Christian walk when the task appointed to us appears daunting. Perhaps we need to take a stand against something our boss requested or stick up for our beliefs in a classroom. We must not fear, but remember that God is with us. One of our veteran ministers, George Hughes, used to say, where God's finger points, his hand will make a way. That was true in the time of Elisha. David Livingston proved it true in Africa, and it will be true in our lives also. We can rest on the assurance that God will give us strength and courage to obey Him when we look His way for what we need. He will never fail. Background Information The account given in this chapter illustrates two important biblical truths. Eventually sin is judged, and God's word will be fulfilled. Verses 1 through 13 record how Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, was anointed king of Israel. This Jehoshaphat was not the one, however, who was king of Judah. The prophet Elisha instructed one of the children of the prophets to go to Jehu, who apparently was chief of the captains, take him into a private place and anoint him as king. The young prophet's words to Jehu in verses 7 through 10 may have been a declaration of what would happen rather than a command. 
God ordered the anointing, knowing that Jehu would kill and may have used that foreknowledge to accomplish his justice. Verses 14 through 37 record the slaying of Joram, Ahaziah, and Jezebel. During this time, the Israelites were at war, attempting to regain the city of Ramoth Gilead. Jehoram, the current king and son of Ahab, and Jezebel had been wounded in battle. He left Jehu, the captain of his army, in charge while he recovered in Jezreel. When the newly anointed Jehu came upon the city, Jehoram wrongly assumed that he came with a message that could only be delivered to Jehoram himself, as the two messengers that were sent out did not return. It is worth noting that Jehoram met Jehu on the very property that had belonged to Naboth the Jezreelite. When Jehoram realized that this was a revolt, he turned to flee but was promptly killed by Jehu. Jehu then ordered his body to be thrown onto the land of Naboth. Verses 30 through 37 record the fulfillment of a prophecy that was given to Elijah 20 years earlier, when Jezebel had Naboth the Jezreelite murdered so that Ahab could acquire his vineyard for a garden. See 1 Kings 21, 17 through 24. Jezebel's death occurred exactly as had been prophesied, ending with the bloody account of her being eaten by dogs. Though it took many years for justice to be completed, it did occur, just as it had been foretold. In verse 31, Jezebel made a reference to Zimri. This alludes to an incident recorded in 1 Kings 16, 8 through 12, 40 years prior, when Zimri, a general, had King Elah killed and then declared himself king. Zimri's reign was only seven days long and Jezebel seemed to be indicating that Jehu would find no peace after he took the crown by force. Though her reference was probably well understood, Zimri, like Jehu, was used as a tool of God's judgment on Elah for his wickedness. See 1 Kings 16, 12. Conclusion As Christians, at some point we may be faced with a challenging assignment from God. When that happens, we must not hesitate to follow through with faith and obedience. God will be with us. Chapter 9 And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins, and take this box of oil in thine hand, and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in, and make him arise up from among his brethren, and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil, and pour it on his head, and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door, and flee, and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting. And he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, Unto which of all us? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha the son of Ahijah. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his Lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, Ye know the man and his communication. And they said, It is false, tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake he to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then they hasted and took every man his garment, and put it under him on the top of the stairs, and blew with trumpets, saying, Jehu is king. So Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat the son of Nimshi conspired against Joram. Now Joram had kept Ramoth Gilead, he and all Israel, because of Hazael king of Syria. But King Joram was returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him when he fought with Hazael king of Syria. 
And Jehu said, If it be your minds, then let none go forth nor escape out of the city to go to tell it in Jezreel. So Jehu rode in a chariot, and went to Jezreel, for Joram lay there. And Ahaziah king of Judah was come down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman over the tower in Jezreel, and he spied the company of Jehu as he came, and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take an horseman, and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So there went one on horseback to meet him, and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. Then he sent out a second on horseback, which came to them, and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu the son of Nimshi, for he driveth furiously. And Joram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready. And Joram king of Israel and Ahaziah king of Judah went out, each in his chariot. And they went out against Jehu, and met him in the portion of Naboth the Jezreelite. And it came to pass, when Joram saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? And Joram turned his hands and fled, and said to Ahaziah, There is treachery, O Ahaziah. And Jehu drew a bow with his full length, and smote Jehoram between his arms, and the arrow went out at his heart, and he sunk down in his chariot. Then said Jehu to Bidkar his captain, Take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth the Jezreelite, for remember how that when I and thou rode together after Ahab his father, the Lord laid this burden upon him. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth, and the blood of his sons, saith the Lord, and I will requite thee in this plat, saith the Lord. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground, according to the word of the Lord. But when Ahaziah the king of Judah saw this, he fled by the way to garden house. And Jehu followed after him, and said, Smite him also in the chariot. And they did so at the going up to Gur, which is by Ibliam. And he fled to Megiddo, and died there. And his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem, and buried him in his sepulchre with his fathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Joram the son of Ahab began Ahaziah to reign over Judah. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, and tired her head, and looked out at a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, he said, Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window, and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs, and he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink, and said, Go see now this cursed woman, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, in the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel.